Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays where it's time for another update on how I've been getting on in space exploration and as you can see it's been going pretty well I've got um, deep space science data uh, catalogs one being produced admittedly a little bit slower than I'd like only two out of three machines here are running but that's uh, that's not too bad I feel it's quite an achievement to be making them at all and if we have a look over here we can see that we've so far made 528 of these so that's nearly a train's worth well um, that means uh, that one's full, that one's, uh, that one's not quite full. And so it's, no, it's not nearly a train's worth, I was thinking a train was 700. No, a train is about 2,100, I think. Or is it 3,000? Anyway, quite a lot more. So we're, we're, <clears throat> we're not as close to a train load as I thought. But these, if we have all of these running steadily, then we will be producing them at one every five seconds, which is the rate I'm producing all of the other catalogues for all of the other sciences at. And so that seems to be the rate that I have decided is probably appropriate. And so far, it has generally been okay. When uh, everything has been running, I've not run out of uh, cattle, I've run out of science stuff. Um, and in fact, whenever I have run out of science stuff, it's because there's been a problem with throughput caused by something else, not caused by the computers here. Now, one of the things you might notice is that, is that these are a different type of supercomputer to the ones I'm using everywhere else. So, if we have a look over here, for example, with the uh, this is Astro 4. This is the tier 1 supercomputer, and you can tell because it's got one line drawn up it like that. Whereas if you look at these, these are tier 3, because they've got three three lines on them. Yeah, not exactly rocket engineering there, is it? <laughs> um, and that's because the deep space science recipes require a significantly more powerful computer in order to produce them um, than the other ones do. So, fair enough. These, these ones are, I think, they're probably four times as fast as the other ones as well. So they're... Um, they, they are better computers, but they're, requ they're absolutely required for this. I can't just use a larger number of the basic ones. Which is slightly awkward, because if we have a look in here, the, um, the recipe for making these is fairly complex. So, it takes an absolutely enormous number of blue circuits, which I suppose is fair enough. You're making a, a, a big supercomputer, you need a lot of circuitry. You've got a lot of superconductive cables, and these aren't trivial to produce. Um, and a load of data that I need to pull in from... Uh, this is what I've been calling the Riddler data, because it's green and has a question mark on it. Um, that's pulled in from biological science and a load of advanced neural gel as well so in order to get this run and, and then also one of one the quantum supercomputers requires quantum processors and processing units as well oops not that way and a, which and a supercomputer which is more processing units and load instrument assembly machines so yeah as is often the case in factorio stuff to make the later tier versions you require the earlier tier versions as well so things just get more and more expensive as you go through so in order to get all of this stuff in there I've gone over to, this is, this is where I'm making the biological science, and I've stuck in a couple of extra stations, I think. Um, there's one, is it this, yeah, there's one down here that's picking up the advanced neural gel, and that's being pumped across from over here, where I've got some extra machines making it now as fast as possible. And in fact, I could probably come over and, remo and remove these uh, speed modules now, because I don't actually need them anymore, because we've got the tanks full and I'm hoping that the gen that just having these running normally will be will be have enough throughput on there to, that we don't need the tanks and actually we've got lots of power available so maybe I won't bother it doesn't it doesn't seem to be a problem yet I've also got I think somewhere up a system somewhere around here I'm not sure where yes here we go nope not that one oh no no the, the that data I was just um, just grabbing out of the uh, out off the, off the belt by hand the data cards here. I'm just grabbing them off the belt by hand and then feeding feeding them in over here, uh, dumping them into the machine in, into a box over here that would then feed this machine in order to make the supercomputers. And as you can see, we've obviously run out of those now, so the, uh, the the construction has stopped. But most of this hasn't been too bad. I put in the first three tiers of supercomputers, as you can see here. We've got in, yes, we've got low-density structures coming in. They were already on the um, on the on the bus system over here for goodness knows what. Uh, the blue circuits were in for an earlier production. Um, it looks like it, they were required for the um, uh, beaming systems, and, and 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 these these quantum processors and 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 um, height and superconducting cables were all already over here. So it was just I only really needed to bring in the um, advanced neural gel. And then also find a way to get the yes, and then find a way to get the data cards over there. And I'm quite glad I did bring in the um, the advanced neural gel like that because it turns out I'm going to need it um, fairly soon for one of the um, for one of the deep space science science things. I think it's I think it's the second tier one that I need that need it need it for. No, it wasn't. It was for the, for making the actual science packs. So I'm going to need it. So it's good that it's on the train system because that means I can then bring it over to up here where I'm going to start doing the science. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's go back and have another look at the um, 
I don't all of the science down here. So this was not too difficult to do, but there's a lot of there's a lot of quite a lot of stuff that needed to be done in order to get this working. The first challenge was that um, in order to make the uh, nanomaterial data, uh, do I mean I mean no, I don't mean nanomaterial. I mean to make the uh, Naquium engineering data, we need ion canisters, and ion canisters are these sort of little bottle things filled up with um, ion stream. Uh, sorry, no. These little bottle things that are being produced here filled up with ion stream. And so I'm doing that down here. We've got the supply of ion stream coming in and we've got the little bottles or the little canisters coming down here and being loaded up and then passed down here to be made into the science. But then to make those, you need to take in um, the uh, secure canisters and superconductive cables and batteries. So I needed to make superconductive cables, which meant I needed uh, cryonite and holmium cables. And to make holmium cables, I needed plastic and holmium plates. And to make holmium plates, I needed I needed holmium ingots. So so there was a massive flood of all kinds of different things coming in here that all needed in order to make in order to make these cables, in order to make these canisters. But then also to make the canisters, I needed heat shielding and glass and copper and steel and plastic and all all those being fed in here into these machines to make the canisters. So there was a huge amount of lots and lots of different things that I had to bring in by train. So I've already I've done I've only done two levels of this, and I've already got three drop-off stations here that are basically entirely you. Well, there's there's one fluid pick, fluids point drop-off point left here, but other than that, I've used all of the inputs from, from all of those stations, which is a bit crazy. There's a, a lot of stuff going into this already. So, but yeah, that was. I mean, it was manageable. There were a lot of different, a lot of different steps in order to make those, but it was, it was sort of okay. The next one, or the previous one, actually, if we look at it in a slightly funny way, <laughs> was um, making the the nano engineering data. And now the the requirements for this aren't too bad. It's just nano material, data cards, and particle streams. So I, I'm bringing in the nano materials, which I'm making somewhere else, um, and the particle streams. But then it produces a bajillion different types of possible outputs. So we've got the data card output, great, that's the thing we actually want. But then sometimes you get the nano nano material back. That's that's okay. You just um, that's that's easy enough. You just loop it back up and feed it back in at the top here. Give, put it back in with a priority on the splitter, and you can reuse it. Great. But then sometimes you get heat shield tiles out, which is a bit weird. Don't know what, um, and that's not even well, not even part of the well, it is part of the input. It's part of the input for the um, for the for the for the for the for the for the, for the nano material. And you also get nano, and you also get um, low density structures and um, superconductive cables and both types of scrap out as well. So I've got this thing. This general mess here of sorting all of this stuff out. So the nano material gets sent back round, fine. The scrap, both types of scrap get put onto one belt, one on each side. That's a bit unnecessary, but it, it keeps it slightly tidier. And then we take the data cards out here, and then we go, oh no, there's still a load of cr other crap left that comes out in very, very small pr pr uh, proportions. So it's only 5% of the time that it produces any of these things, but it does still produce them, so you need to do something with them. So we've got the heat shield tiles being passed down here to hopefully be made into these canisters. And as long as we keep using all of the different um, data cards in the same proportions, which we should because that's how data works, this, this shouldn't be an issue. But if there's something later on that requires massive quantities of this, then we might start to see some problems with this feed, with this loop, loop back here. And then these um, superconductive cables are being passed down here and again into this one to be turned into the, into the pots down here. So I've managed to reuse those fairly ne nearby, but at the moment the... Um, the the low density structures are a bit of a well. There's nothing around here that actually uses them. Technically, making the nano material does use them, but I'm not doing that here. So we've just got them building up in a chest at the moment. And speaking of nano materials, that's a, a bit of a ridiculous recipe as well. If we look over here, where I'm actually making them, um, here, yes. It takes so many different things to make the nanomaterials. We've got the aeroframe bulkheads, the heavy girders, the vitalic epoxies, dynamic emitters, and particle streams. And this is basically this is basically something from each of the other um, each of the research paths, each of the each of using each of them as exotic materials. So aeroframe bulkheads are made out of beryllium, basically. In fact, they're made entirely out of beryllium. Oh, and low density structures. So that's where they could go in. The low density structures could go in as part of these bulkheads. Um, then you've got the heavy girders that are made of iridium. You've got the vitalic epoxy that's made of vitamelange. You've got dynamic emitters, which I'm going to assume are made of hol yes, they're made of holmium here, as you can see right next door. Um, and then you've got the particle stream, which is just energy intensive stuff. And yeah, so this is using basically a bit of absolutely everything, which is. Uh, kind of a mess and is sort of I suppose sort of why I want to build them here rather than over there on the other side now 
the problem with this is that they then have to they, I've, I've only got this one machine here making them which is why I've filled it completely full of um, productivity modules like that uh, sorry speed modules like that um, how's that doing for power here oh absolutely fine oh, great um, so in order to make these reasonably quickly because I want not only do I want them to be used here for making infrastructure projects I also am loading them into a, a train system over here where they will then be grabbed by a train that passes in and taken off to be made into a, into the um, into the into the deep space science so I'm concerned that at some point I'm going to start using these at, at, a, at a rate where one machine even with all of these speed modules in isn't going to be enough now this is built this is making them at 34 times speed um, because these machines run at 10 times speed and then there's another plus 240 percent from the uh, from the speed modules but there's a chance that at some point I might need to sort of extend this down and then somehow get all of these different belts somehow to, to, to unload off out of the uh, down next to a, a row of these machines and that's the problem with the way I've set this up so because I'm feeding everything in in the top it saves an enormous amount of space so it's a good idea from that point of view but if we ever start to have any of these machines running absolutely flat out and I decide I need to put more in then there's not really going to be room for it and you end up having to do something like this where all these belts are coming through where they where the machine first machine here used to be and then I've put a long column of them in and that that's kind of okay and it does work but the problem with this is that if I then if I then start to need large numbers of these pressure vessels pressure lattice vessels whatever they're called there isn't room for me to do that down here as well um, I'd have to sort of squeeze them through the gap here and run them down here and then there's if there would be room for these and so so it's it's okay as long as only occasionally things need to go plop downwards like this um, and potentially it would only be this it, maybe it would only be this one that need, would need to go down like that but then if this one had to as well if I needed lots if I then because I'm making lots of nanomaterials that uses the um, the the uh, dynamic emitters if that meant I suddenly needed loads of dynamic emitter production down here as well then I'd start to run into serious problems with space and so it's it's not ideal. I mean, the idea of this was supposed was was in theory that this would just be for making infrastructure, so making buildings, making spaceship parts, making that this, this this and that. I didn't really want to use it for intermediates that were then going to be shipped out, but I've sort of ended up doing that because, to be honest, I was a little bit lazy with a lot of this um, deep space science construction. I've just trained in a lot of things rather than making them on site. Another example of that is this particle stream and the um, and the ion stream. Um, I. I'm making those at the moment. I'm making those over in the energy science area over here, and I'm making a lot of um, plasma. I'm making a lot of ion stream, and I'm probably making a decent amount of plasma stream somewhere up here. Um, here, well, I've got two machines making it. That's not a huge amount, uh, but so far it seems to be enough that I've managed to put in all of these stations, and it is keeping up. But I'm a little bit. I have noticed that there are a lot of trains coming through keeping these tanks topped up. So we are getting through enough of this stuff that possibly I should be actually making it on site. So that might be something I expand into, I change later and start doing doing a bit more locally. I also note we seem to have run out of um, Naquium here already, which is quite impressive. Have we actually run out or is it just that the trains are being a bit weird? Just the trains are being a bit weird, there's still a load in here, so that's probably alright. Okay, so that was the first two, um, first two, uh, first two de deep space sciences. Um, this one, the uh, the the Naquium engineering data, was a headache because of the sheer number, because of making all of these canisters and things like that. So that was a bit of a, a bit of a faff. Um, all of the inputs are required to make the canisters. This was a bit of a faff because of all of the outputs. But I'm happy to say, after that, it got things got a little bit easier. The next one, this, this uh, Naquium, in, Naquium structural data, only required Naquium ingots, data cards and lube. And I've got lube on the bus, just, uh, on the train system, so I just brought in a train full of lube. We've got the data cards, so they're coming in by train. Naquium's coming in by train. Bang. Done. That was easy. That was uh, made a nice change. And there weren't even any weird outputs. This one was strangely easy. I almost wondered if I got it wrong, but no, we've got the data cards coming out of it there. And then finally... We have the um, where are they being fed in? Yeah, up here we have the um, the deep space the, the uh, no the asteroid asteroid void data they're called something like that anyway um, the void probe data asteroid void probe asteroid field void probe data let's let's look it up <laughs> void uh, this one the interstellar void probe data there we go that that one and that's that's made by launching a rocket a, a um, probe from out in realm of shadows and i did this in an earlier earlier episode we've got this probe silo here that um takes in the the probes and the 
probe rockets, launches them, and then we're feeding this down this ridiculously long belt that goes all the way around here, up here, and then is loaded into the spaceship that comes over to get the Naquitite. So this is a nice, simple system that I believe is is, is working as expected. Um, and I got this up and running quite a while back because it was relatively straightforward. What is notable, though, is that over here here is the sheer amount of stuff that's required to make these probes um, so up here we've got as you can see coming in here we've got a lot of different things we've got it takes uranium fuel cells rocket rocket control it takes uranium fuel cells rocket control modules um, rocket solid rocket fuel nanomaterial uh, data cards which I'm bringing in separately and laser turrets and the data got data cards coming in up here because there's loads we need loads and loads of them um, and so we need quite a lot of all of that stuff so i'm bringing all of this in by bot at the moment which is a bit dirty i shouldn't really be doing that but um i am anyway shush <laughs> um i'm yeah and then those are being loaded directly into this spaceship that then flies off with them and uh, and we'll and we'll launch them as, as and when required so it's yeah so there's there's a lot of a lot of different things going into the um, into the deep space catalogs as you can see from the diagram um however i feel like i've now got I've now basically got that going. The um, there is this problem here with um, the why now why are you sad? Oh, because the okay, there's a problem over here with the um, with the scrap disposal apparently. Uh, so that's going to need that's going to need looking into. Um, I don't know why we've got we've got one green square and you're saying oh okay we're not actually doing this we're re Okay, I haven't set this up properly. So this, this, my, um, I put down the standard blueprint for a recycling station, but I didn't have any normal stations in my inventory, so I dropped down an LTN station, and that's meant it hasn't got all the configuration done properly. So I'm going to need to do that separately, uh, get that, get that up and working. Uh, in fact, let's just say um, set train limit to green square. Uh, don't read train contents. Don't send to train. We don't care about that. So that now should. Oh, it hasn't got the right name. This should be called... Actually, let's just click on Scrap Pickup down here to make sure I get the capitalization correct. There we go. So if I set that... There we go. There's a couple of things wrong with it. But now, here we go. Scrap Pickup Train is coming out here. And so that'll that'll, that'll fix that problem. Um, yeah, that's that's the problem with using sort of... Well, that's the problem with not paying enough attention when you when you adjust a, um, a blueprint ever so slightly. <laughs> so, yeah, my fault. Well, everything's my fault because it's a single-player game. But, you know. So, yes... Through all of this, um, all of this effort, I have managed to get deep space science up and running, and I feel that was quite an achievement. That was my biggest achievement from the uh, from the last stream. Um, I haven't got deep space. I haven't got it actually being made into science packs yet, though. What I'm planning to do for that is so over, over here, as I was saying, we've got the astro science, the four machines making that. We've got energy science, we've got material science, we've got biological science. So the logical ex extension of this is then to just put in another section up here that's going to be doing the deep space science. So we'll have. More stations like this for dropping off all of the um, all all of the catalogs and shipping them in. We're then we'll ship in cryonite because that seems to be needed for all the deep space sciences. We'll have a fluid station to bring in the um, uh, the the the, 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 the uh, deep space science to bring in the advanced neural gel that we're going to need for this. But other than that, that's all fairly straightforward. I haven't really looked at the second one yet. Um, as well, it's going to require naquium cubes as well, so that's going to be another thing to drop off into into a solid station somewhere. But um. This is seeming reasonably manageable, I think. Um, I'm not too worried about it yet, so we're. Uh, I think I think the first couple of tiers are going to be manageable. And there we go. There's the um, there's the scrap train that's just picked up everything from here. So now we can now this belt can run. Those machines can run again. Everything is hunky dory, except for the fact that I'm not filling these cans up. No, I'm not making these cans fast enough. So I need another one of these machines in place. So yes, that was the main achievement from the uh, from the last stream. But I also went round and fixed a load of little bits and pieces here and there. So on over on um, Gear Often, for example, um, this still needs a little bit more fixing because it's run out of power. Um, but what we've got here is I, I pulled up all of the spare um, pulverizers that were around here because I don't need anything like that. I didn't need anything like as many as I had. Um, and I pulled up most of the spare um, solar panels because solar panels aren't great on gear often because it has really, really long days. So as you can see from here, there's a, um, it's about from 12, it's about a 10 minute day, day period or actually going from going from like to like it's about it's about 17 18 minutes 16 17 minute day and so that's that means it's not really practical to use um accumulators to hold all the power so i'm just going to rely on this however that's run out of power if i go i could go to kalidus orbit 
and then redirect this one to gear often. As a, so this is a temporary thing, really. Uh, and go there. And there we go. That's, that's heating it up again. So now if we look back at gear often, we should find that this heat, this starts working again very, very quickly because it won't have gone below the sort of the um, the temperature where it starts to work. So yeah, immediately these have kicked back in again and we're, we're producing the power that we need. And now everything is, is running again nice and quickly and we can charge charge these guns back up again. Now I'm going, I'm going to need to put in another transmitter for gear often because this isn't, isn't sufficient. Um, I don't want to be switching over the one that charges up the spaceships to charge up the planet as well. Um, but in, in essentially it's it's basically working so there's yeah this is this is more or less okay the other big thing i've done recently is upgrade the version of space exploration the space exploration mod pack i'm running and this is a little bit um exciting for for several reasons there are a number of a number of changes have been made the, the, there are two really significant ones the most significant of which i reckon is that now um a vulcanite planet not a vulcanite, a vitamelange planet is guaranteed to always have biters. Now, the area of tulip that I've explored so far is safe because it's explored, but as but if I go any further out, or if my pollution cloud drifts any further out, then there might turn it might turn out there are biters somewhere just outside the um, the area of radar. Now, I can go in with using the um, the beam energy beams in glaive mode and kill bite as I see like that but that's only really good for for the nests and the and the worms so I've gone in and put these little pillbox things of lasers dotted around around the outside of the base and this one doesn't have power because I put it in the wrong place um, so there's there's a handful of these dotted around the places where the pollution is being produced so I'm hoping that those are going to be sufficient to um, distract and kill any biters that come in because I'm not expecting to get enormous numbers of them what's happened here Okay, spaceship's landed. Um, I'm not expecting to get enormous numbers of biters coming in um, because I'm not producing that much pollution and they haven't had much of a chance to build up huge nests out here. So I think I should be able to stay on top of it with a little bit of effort. So I'm, I'm not going in and building enormous walls around absolutely everything because that would take forever and the amount of ammunition I'd have to bring in would take up so much uranium and so much, or, or it would just be lasers all the way around and just the effort of building all of that, I just I can't be bothered to be honest. So I'm going to leave it with the with these little pillboxes and so just see if that works see if that's enough um, and i'm cautiously optimistic the other thing that's changed is that now um spaceships that are just going uh, around in that are just staying in space in the previous version they could just detach from um from whatever they were attached to uh, in space drift off a little bit and then just start the engines and fly away now you need to actually have a booster tank in so there's now this new recipe in here for the ion booster tank which means i don't need to worry about a different type of fuel in these ships but these sort of booster tanks are only any good for um, launching from space as it says over there in the box text so it's not been too much of a change. However, it did mean because this spaceship is so close to the um, the the hull stress, inte the in integrity um, check for the hull stress, I, I had to remove one of the ion tanks that was here as well. So we've now got slightly lower fuel capacity on the ship. However, um, it's now that that that, that gives me ten thousand, whereas these give me twenty five thousand. So it's only only dropped by fifteen thousand, and that's always been absolutely been plenty to get these around. I've had to do exactly the same thing on my my personal ship as well, um, but that one I was able to just whack an extra tank in because there was there's plenty of there's plenty of headroom on the on the hull stress over here. This hull stress thing has has been stressing me out quite a lot, and it's something I want to I want to improve. Um, it's this one here. This is the um, spaceship spaceship, but it needs the um, deep space science packs to in order to get this. So I'm going to have to. This is probably going to be fairly high on my list of things I want to research once I've got them, um, and that will get me an extra 500 spaceship structural integrity, which is pretty good. That's basically going to add another 50% onto the size of spaceships I can have. Another thing I've learned um, from reading the instructions, so I should have known it already, is that the shorter and fatter you make spaceships, or the closer to the closer to square or possibly circular you make your spaceships, the um, the more efficient they are for the amount of space in them for the structural integrity. So this one is pretty good. This one's okay. This one is blooming awful because it's really long and thin, and is probably why I've been having so many structural problems with it. So in hindsight, I should have made it shorter and wider, maybe rotated this sort of power generation section round through 90 degrees, um, just to bring the whole thing down and make it a bit a bit more of a chonker rather than such a, a long, thin thing. Um, so that's something to think about in the future when I'm designing ships. But for now, meh, what can you do? Thinking of Tulip, there was another thing I did over there as well. Um, so I discovered that the um, the, Vul 
that the Vulcan Naqu Naquium production had ground to a halt, and it turned out that it was because it had run out of the Vitalic Acid for this stage. So, as is the Factorio way, I traced it back down here to where the Vitalic Acid was being made, and it turned out there was no glass coming in. So I've traced that back, and it was because um, somehow this this uh, combinator here had been destroyed. So what I think must have happened is there must have been a meteor strike here that took out, probably did a load of damage to everything around here, and everything was repaired or replaced except for this one combinator that I just didn't have the parts for. So I came out, fixed that, and got we got the stone flowing through here. But in order to make the whole thing a bit more a bit more efficient, um, I've done this wrong looking at this. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. In order, as I'm going to say, in order to make it a bit more efficient, what I've what, what I've done is I've I've put the, this belt coming in up here, bringing the stone up from from down here where it's produced in large quantities as part of the uh, pulverizing process. So I've just pulled out the, the stone that's being produced from the pulverization and passed it up here. Um, the theory was that I'll use that because it's free stone as opposed to using up what's coming in by train because eventually that's going to run out. I think I I looked on the map and there is a stone mine over here that only has forty three thousand left in it. So that's going to run out in the not too distant future. Um, now I've made a bit of a boo-boo here because the uh, the prioritization of all of this is now wrong. This shouldn't be being fed up. Oh, actually that, that's fixable. So the first priority needs to be anything that's coming down this belt because that's the sand and stone that's coming from the Naquium processing. So I need to use that up because otherwise it'll back up. So that comes in here and is prioritized by all of this. Then I want to prioritize the stuff that's coming from down here because it's free. And only then, after that, do I want to start using this stuff that's being brought in by train. So actually what I should do is just take out that. Um, bots come in and do that for me. Great. That will now prioritize properly. So it's so we'll have, yeah, so down here we've got the stuff coming in from at the bottom is being prioritized in here. And then the glass is being produced. The stuff that's coming in from this side is being prioritized. Yeah, so that's, that's, all, that's correct now. But while I was doing this, I did make a bit of a mistake, which I shall admit to because it was mildly amusing. At first, I just put in this splitter here, taking the stone off up here and, um, and passing everything else down here. Um, of course, then when this filled up, that jammed and all of this stopped working. So I've now put in this sort of this cunning bypass system where it, by priority, by choice, it'll pass everything through this way. So the stone will go this way if there's room for it. But if not, it'll go around this bypass here and, and the stone will be dumped down this path into the, in, and then it'll go into the trains down here to be taken away off to Norvis to be used for everything else I use stone for on Norvis, which to be honest is again, mostly glass. So I think that's basically everything I have for you today. Um, the as I said, the big thing that I've got going is uh, now is the um, is the is the uh, deep space science pack one. I'm uh, I'm pleased with having managed to get that up and running. That was quite a big quite a big job, and it feels like a big step forward as well. Everything else I've been doing has been sort of just fiddling around the edges, building up infrastructure, ma making things run a bit better and a bit faster. But now this is making actual doing actual science, and that's what I'm here for. That's what the game's all about. <laughs> so yes, that's been a nice thing to to get on and get get this actually done. So that's been um, yeah that's been everything that's everything I have for you today. Uh, don't forget to come back uh, for the streams. Um, the schedule is going to be a bit all over the place for the next couple of weeks. I apologise for that, but it's um, while I'm I've got some um, some drama stuff happening in real life, and by drama I don't mean that I'm squabbling with my friends or anything like that. No, it's, this is this is the good sort of drama where it involves going up on stage and playing a part. But I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing for the next few months just yet so, but once that's sorted out I'll, I'll, I'll have a, uh, a hard and fast schedule so there's probably there's going to be a uh, space another I'm going to carry on with the space exploration streams don't worry about that um, and they'll probably be on Wednesdays for the uh, foreseeable future or at least next week we'll, we'll see how it goes after that and the Minecraft streams are going to move to Mondays because that's when everyone can make it so yeah don't forget to come along to those I'll carry on releasing the um, the update videos of course and I think the the uh, Factorio ones will probably stick with Friday because that should be should be fairly easy to do um, and then the uh, and the Minecraft ones will come out whenever I can whenever there seems to be a sensible slot for them I'm not quite sure about that yet the other stuff may move around as well we shall see um, and of course the GTA videos will fit in whenever I whenever I feel like fitting those in as well. So yes, the, the schedule is going to get a big stir over the next couple of weeks, and then, but then it'll then it'll settle down at least for a, a good few months, and so hopefully that won't um, won't cause too much upset, and you'll still be able to make it to all of my streams. So yes, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. See you then.